Hello everybody, my name is Jose Cadlet and welcome to my keynote speech, The Future of Sourcing, here at Recruitech Conference. The evolution of the emerging technology over the past years was really fast. And imagine even with COVID, it's kind of giving you an impression that we will be using a lot of these technologies right away. And there are these projects on the market yet. Imagine, for example, Tailspin created a simulator, VR simulator, for training you or your people to fire people. Yeah, so it's so-called experience learning where, where you can actually create and train yourself in laying off people. Uh, there is another Tengai Unbiased, which is a robot. As you can see, it's really like a tangible robot, which can actually do an interview with a candidate with the intention to be unbiased. There are some other technologies like, for example, this virtual anchor, Xinxua, where in China people are watching news with this artificial person actually looking as a real human being. Maybe they sometimes they don't even know that it's not a real human being. The latest technology, this is really latest news with Unreal Engine, where we can already create a copy, for example, of your person, like face, uh, figure, etc., and create an artificial video with you. And for example, this video can be supplied to a candidate even without your effort. Yeah, so this is all we can actually somehow use in sourcing, and I will be talking about usage of the video later on. Face recognition. Imagine that face recognition, for example, again in China, it's quite common on streets and everywhere, giving you some social score. But imagine that we created here at our office, we created this device uh, we called Facecam, where this is device uh, 3D printed here at the office. And when we check inside, you can see that there is a Raspberry computer, no expensive parts in it. Yeah? It's like for up to, I don't know, $100. Uh, some software to that as well. And with this device, when I point it at you and kind of take a picture of you, like I did, for example, here with one MC of a recruitment conference, it's comparing this with a database of pictures in LinkedIn. And it's telling me that with the similarity preciseness of 98.2%, this is Peter Skondianis from the company Kokuma working as human relations consultant. So imagine if we are able to do this at here at office, what are those companies having billions of dollars able to do there? If you uh, wonder if this is actually your competitive advantage in sourcing, let's see. I would say that your daily success will be a little bit more modest and that's why I'm supplying you here with this presentation. If you wonder who I am, I'm actually a former software engineer who studied uh, mathematical engineering at Faculty of Nuclear Sciences and Physical Engineering. And from that, I got into sourcing here with Johnny Campbell from Social Talent in 2014, giving him my book, People as Merchandise. It was one of those first books in, in sourcing, actually. And if you ask me what I actually do, I would answer that I'm changing rigid industries which definitely in 2007 when I started, recruitment was definitely a rigged industries. And I'm changing those industries by application of technology and analytical approach. Now, from the perspective of entrepreneur, I co-founded companies Good Call Recruitment Academy and Data Crude, where we not only do the recruitment and sourcing, but we also educate people and we also create our own ATS Data Crude because we believe, as I said, technology is really important factor in our business. As you can see, we, for example, for the past year, did over 1,200 placements. So I can supply you here with some benchmarks, as you will see right away. Even if the 2020 was really tough year for us, we had to lay off a lot of people as well. Our business temporarily suddenly dropped by almost 70% we still managed to be a uh, 150th fastest growing company in Europe by Financial Times. And also our company Data Crude awarded in Fast 50 by Deloitte. So tough year and you probably experience the similar at your organizations. With COVID, uh, of course, we have some uh, new things in sourcing as well, because for example, job security, is suddenly far more important for candidates than before. So it's 
putting a pressure on you as a sorcerer or 360 degree recruiter with, for example, persuasion of those candidates. So before COVID, quite common, if you, uh, if you don't have a new job yet, you, you, can, you can easily uh, quit the current job, but this is not the case anymore. The second thing is that there are more active candidates on the market. So if you are kind of a sourcer slash a recruiter used to apl uh, applying outbound sourcing, you might be willing a little bit more transfer into inbound pipeline as well. And finally, candidates are more difficult to move. Yeah? We, for example, here in the Czech Republic currently have the most strict lockdown since the beginning of the pandemic. A lot of candidates are maybe somewhere at Canary Islands and they don't care much about some interviews, etc. Yeah? Even if you can do them in a digital online world. So uh, here I'm providing you with four trends, I believe, are trending in talent sourcing and you can use them practically in everyday life of a sourcer or recruiter. Number one, calculate your sourcing benchmarks. Imagine this is, for example, the example of one requisition, in this case, a commodity buyer, where we needed to put 92 people on long list to get four people who are interested in the role and uh, who might be from the first screening interested, uh, interesting for us as well. From that, three people went to the interview, one, one person got the offer and one person actually accepted the offer. It took us 31 days to get that one higher. And also there were one sourcer and one recruiter uh, working on that. That's all you can see from this export from our ATS. So this is a different example where this was a little bit different role, kind of a basic role of an insurance advisor uh, for a huge bank. But the important thing here is that we did just the sourcing here. So we outsourced sourcing. We do a lot of RPO, a lot of uh, recruitment outsourcing. But the thing is that it took us over 400 hours to get those 30 people who are willing to go uh, for the interview. So imagine when you compare it with advertisement, this bank would be doing 10 years ago just over advertisement and taking them like one hour of time, suddenly you need to be, and those companies must be prepared to invest a lot of hours to get those people to the interview. So when we speak about average numbers, uh, we calculated that we need to approach 70 people to get that one higher. When I compared these numbers from the funnel, uh, when I compared those numbers, for example, with numbers from Social Talent or from Adler Group in, in the US, uh, it's really the same numbers. It's kind of like in the neighborhood of 50 to 70, regardless of industry, regardless of the region. If you are agency, you should usually have those numbers higher. If you are in-house, you should have those numbers usually lower. Of course, when you do just IT roles, for example, software development roles, you will be normally over 100 easily. Yeah? So this is a mixture. Uh, we at Good Call, for example, do also sales, marketing, etc. altogether. Uh, why this is important? Uh, with this, of course, you can calculate how many people uh, you need to put on the long list uh, for the interview, etc. to get that one higher, which is providing you with the possibility to predict if you are about to finish this requisition, for example, next month or in two months. Yeah? And finally, you can, sp you can also spot the bottlenecks in your sourcing funnel. Is it, problem that, uh, is it problem that, for example, the response rate is low? Is the problem that, for example, the acceptance of the offer is low and you can solve the bottlenecks there? So, of course, this is the ultimate tool uh, for you as a manager. If you are a manager managing other sourcing uh, people and sourcing funnels. This is the ultimate tool you need to use even to compare sources and the recruiters among each others. So when I take, when I take for example here Teresa, uh, Teresa is uh, a sourcer and Peter is a recruiter and you can see all the numbers there. So you can see that for example Teresa uh, actually longlisted over 2,000 people etc. Yeah so the more complicated things is putting those two things all together. Yeah? Because imagine when we know that a sourcer is able from 19 long-listed people get one interview and a recruiter is able from seven interviews get that one higher, how many people do you need 
to long list to get that one placement to that one higher. It's actually 133, 133. And with this knowledge, suddenly you know that, for example, you need to allocate there two sourcers to get this work done within, for example, two days, etc. You can predict, you can allocate resources, etc. So this is suddenly more complicated when there are more people involved in that. Uh, we are kind of measuring everything. So we even compare these numbers among teams, among branches, as you can see in the first column, uh, there is hours. So it's how many sourcing hours are being spent per one placement. So we can compare the efficiency costs for the teams and branches, etc. Trend number two, talent pumping and how this can increase your efficiency. Imagine that LinkedIn and what I usually say, the biggest merit about LinkedIn is the data behind it, not only for searching, but for mapping the market as well. You can, for example, find top companies where to take those candidates from without any extra knowledge, Googling, etc. I can find out what are, for example, the top 10 companies in Hungary employing accountants yeah, with German, for example. Uh, I can map locations with the talent you need. I can find which company is using which technology. Is this company like Microsoft oriented or is this company using Java, C++, Python, etc. I can find out education experience with the maturity of the market. Yeah, maybe there are a lot of those people on the market, but the maturity of that people is not so high because most of them has, for example, between one and three years of experience. You can find out who's hiring, you can find out who's firing. And for example, you can find languages as well. You can use LinkedIn Recruiter, not Lite, but the higher one, where, for example, in this case, I created a search where I put their Azure as a skill, the Microsoft Cloud technology in Germany, which has given me over 20,000 results, which is definitely more exhaustive for searching, but for talent mapping, it's enough. Yep. And as you can see, I have a list of top 10 companies employing these people without any knowledge really, really, really quickly. Yeah, so uh, really quickly, I have insights uh, about the market and now I can focus my strategy inbound or outbound on these companies. I can even expand the list to one, one top 50 companies if I want to. I can go even further and I can find out which regions in Germany are having the numbers, what's the numbers behind the regions or what's the numbers behind uh, cities in that region. So I can see how many people in Stuttgart are having this uh, skill Azure. Based on that, you can provide this knowledge to your management and they can, they can for example, uh, open the branch there or not open a branch there or maybe they have a branch there, but they decide to open that role in this city in this region, not in that region, not in that country. Yeah? So this is really a data which can put a sourcing and you as a sourcer or recruiter on a strategic level helping management. You can find the maturity behind that with experience, as I already said, and you can use also LinkedIn Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator account for something like 60 euros per month. But the great benefit about LinkedIn Sales Navigator is that you can search for companies with many filters. This is what you cannot do anywhere else. As we can see right here, I'm looking for companies in Germany, uh, in automotive industries, huge companies because the size of companies are 10,000 employees plus. But I'm looking for companies uh, whose headcount is actually decreasing at least by 10%. So I'm looking for companies who are firing people at that moment. When you open a detail of a one company, you can see something like that, where there is a chart with a full headcount as it was growing and suddenly it was decreasing. You can see the medium tenor, uh, 1.8 year, which is also giving you some insights. And you can see the breakdown of uh, the departments. So maybe the company is decreasing employees, but it, as you can see right here, for example, in HR, they are actually hiring people. Yeah, so this is what you can do here as well. So really, really, you can be a strategic partner uh, based on this info. Number three, focus on sourcing architecture and leadership. Imagine normally the situation, a sourcer recruiter. That's a common scenario, which when you do, for example, IT roles, might be something like that, that one recruiter actually has more sourcers 
which the recruiter can use. Or you can use a sourcing hub where usually we, we use it, for example, at our organization as well. We can have a remote, or a remote destination with a hub where there are sourcers, they are communicating over a lead with other recruiters in other cities, uh, for example, in our region right here. The problem is that the work of a sourcer, it's really complicated. Imagine that sourcer needs to search, the sourcer needs to know channels and tools around this. They need to find more information about those candidates yeah, using, for example, ProPet, etc. They need to approach people, find contact details. Yeah? For example, Lucia, we use Lucia and Sportfish here at our organization. They need to be able to approach creating email sequencing, uh, creating, for example, video in, uh, invitations. They need to be able to pick up the phone and call. They need to do offline sourcing, automation, inbound really a lot of skills which are sometimes actually contradictory so usually the best searcher is not the best approacher yeah so it makes sense to do something we can call it agile uh, where we can break down the process even more and we can have not just a sourcer but specialties of a sourcer we can have a sourcer who's doing long listing yeah so long listing and automation for example for other people for other sourcers who's, for example, doing just approaching and then, of course, supplying this to a recruiter. So there are other ways how to be more efficient. It really depends on the volume you are working with, uh, industries, etc. Number four, sourcing automation. Because I usually say, why are you doing things which can be dedicated to a robot? Okay? Why to do the routine things which can be done to robot. I don't want to do the work of a robot. Yeah? I don't want to do work which a robot cannot do. I would say things with some added value of a human being. Uh, if, you, if I say robot, you probably imagine something like this, like a really robot. And we Czechs have a special relation to this because actually a robot is a Czech word from 1920 by a Czech novelist, Karel Čapek. And Usually a robot, when you meet robots, especially in sourcing, it will be something like this. It will be, it will be software. So this is my desk where I have four computers and there are robots on it working in Poland, Germany, Romania, etc. Sending, for example, automatic LinkedIn invites, sending automatic messages, expanding network, etc. Uh, with a new tool, LinkedIn Helper version 2, which is a desktop tool you can download. It's a Russian tool. Uh, really well done i would say from the from the software perspective uh, you can create these workflows so you can for example say okay i want finance auditors in hungary i have thousand of them perfect and i want to send them automatically invite personificated so as you can see right here you can actually use these variables like first name company position etc so you can say hello first name i noticed that you work as position at company and it will be it will be switched by the real company position and name of the person uh, which is this invitation sent to yeah and after the person actually accepts the invitation the person will be uh, sent with a follow-up message automatically as well this all can be done on autopilot with linkedin helper uh, when you want to do these things with instagram facebook maybe even TikTok, GitHub, etc. Uh, you can use Phantom Buster, which is a French tool. It works a little bit differently. It works in cloud, so you don't need to leave your laptop open to actually, uh, to actually be working. And you can do the similar things, but also with other platforms. So I usually call this sourcing transhumanism, because as you can see, you as a single individual has only some capacity. You can approach only some number of people every day. You can do only some number of interviews every day, some number of screenings every day. But with these tools, you can enhance your capacity and become kind of like a super sourcer. Yeah? And uh, this is definitely the added value you can use right away. This is the future is now thing which you can use today. All right, other source uh, forms of automation might be, for example, email sequencing. We use MixMax. You can create automatic follow-ups with email, but also with emails and messages on LinkedIn. 
you can create some automatic reminders, for example, with followupden.com. Uh, you can automate screening and scheduling instead of avoiding these back and forth messages about the date of interview or screening you can use calendly uh, you can uh, automate posting with buffer or contentino and for example in linkedin there is also a native watchdogs kind of native automation for searches uh, which is called linkedin search alert so you can create watchdogs and be notified about a new people uh, for that search automatically Sometimes the AI and robots fails us. Yeah, as you can see right here, when the AI was asked to pick these pictures with muffins or cupcakes or whatever it is, uh, but the AI wasn't able to distinguish between the picture of Chihuahua and cupcake because for the robot, it looks like the same. That's why sometimes uh, we don't see some of those technologies yet on the market. And of course, even with automation like Phantom Buster, those robots they do mistakes sometimes they they do it properly uh, but they don't have common sense so finally sometimes it's doing something what you don't want to but the overall added value is really there uh, finally a uh, few tools uh, which can kind of boost your sourcing pipeline really quickly and maybe you don't know about those tools because they are pretty new one of those tools is phonebook.cz. Uh, in this tool, you can actually put there mall.hu, for example, like the Hungarian company, and it will supply me with all the emails this tool found on Google. So you can see the pattern of the email, or maybe you can see really the email of the person already in this list. So it's really working nicely. Again, I can do this manually if I want to, but why I would be doing this manually when there are free tools which can do this for me. Another tool is Lempot. Lempot is a plugin for Google Chrome where actually it looks like this and you can automate engagement there. So you can create a LinkedIn post and instead of sending to your colleagues and friends, hey, please like it, because you want to expand the organic reach, you can do this automatically over Lempot where you can have those people connected in it. And when we create, for example, our pod, uh, we are trusting each other that anyone can actually post there a link to some LinkedIn post and it will be automatically liked or commented uh, by other people in that pod. Yeah? So as you can see, for example, here, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually overtaking the whole sourcing for, for social talent. And I posted this quite salesy, I would say, quite salesy post and it got over 300 likes. But is it really like a natural likes or maybe I helped a little bit with Lempot by automatic likes by other people from some pods. We have, for example, pod in our company as well. So I don't need to ask my people to like this post. I can, or they can as well, put there the link and it will be liked automatically by other people in our organization. And finally, Story Express Recorder, Marketa, our sourcer here, she's creating a video for Jacob, uh, which is individual sourcing video where she's something like, hello Jacob, I find your profile, uh, it's perfect, etc. cetera. Uh, it can be LinkedIn profile, but it can be Stack Overflow, GitHub profile, Facebook profile, Instagram profile. It can be a CV, it really doesn't matter. You can send it to Jacob. Jacob will open this video. And once Jacob actually finished with the video, you will see, you will get notification about uh, this fact. So you can then follow up on that if Jacob will not do that sooner than you. With this technique, you can actually get up to 100% response rate. On average, we got 60, which is still really good, for example, for IT people, when you imagine that the average response rate for IT software development people is something like 15, 25%. If you want to know more about the tools I use, just hop on this link where you can find my talent sourcing stack, which is a spreadsheet I maintain. And that's it. So if you have any questions, just find me, uh, of course, here at the conference, but of course, at other my profiles like LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, you can find me at Twitter, YouTube, or maybe Clubhouse. Sometimes I'm there as well, the newest social network audio only. And of course, enjoy the rest of RecruTech conference. Ciao.